Erasmus Children's Church is starting right now. If there's any children, or if they come in late, Lindsay's back there ready to take the children's church on. Uh, also announcing today, youth. The youth will be working the corn maze today. They're going to be out at Coulter's. They're going to be working the corn maze. I believe they're going to be there this morning. I think 10 or 11. I'm not really sure when. And they'll be working. If you want to get lost, go to the corn maze today and hassle some teenagers. <laughs> Bible study Tuesday, 9 o'clock in the morning. We're going to be doing Zoom Bible study. Wednesday, we have an online service at 6 p.m. Central Time. Does anyone else have an announcement this morning? All right, let's have opening prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And Lord, we thank you for this time that we have with you. Lord, today... We want to celebrate. We want to celebrate your supper, your Lord's Supper. Lord, as we commune with one another and you and all the saints in the past, Lord, bless our time together with you, and I pray this in your name. Amen. Good, join me in the call to worship. Now let us be united. And let our song be heard. Now let us be a vessel. For God's redeeming word. We all are one mission. We are all in one call. Our varied gifts united. By Christ, Christ the, the Lord, Lord of all. all.
Does anyone here have a praise or a testimony? Mike. Yes. 35 years ago, this lady here said yes, and I've been paying for it ever since. Oh, my. <laughs> In a good way. True, she's very patient. 35 year anniversary. Yes, Congratulations. Sir. Amen. Anyone else have a praise or a testimony this morning? Yes. I just like to say that my son returned from Kuwait last Sunday, and we're very glad that he's home. Amen. Your son's home from Kuwait. That's praise, isn't it? Yes, it is. He's probably got some stories to share, doesn't he? Does anyone have a prayer request? I have a prayer request here for a Barbara and the Adams family because she passed away and she had a long history of medical problems, but Lord, Lord knows who all this family is. So pray for the Adams family and the loss that they've experienced. And I'm going to add something else here. You see, people, you see the farmers out working, you know, harvesting right now? This is crunch time. And a lot of them farmers have been out there a long time, long hours. This is when they start having accidents. Let's start praying for their safety. Don't let them work so much that they make a mistake and somebody gets hurt. Let's pray for them. And we have a prayer request for George, Jan's brother-in-law. She's, uh, he's got cancer. We're praying for him. And let's not forget the president and his wife. Of all people in our country, they both have COVID. So let's pray for them. And I have a request for myself. My sugar's just all over the map right now. Right, I woke up this morning. It was really, really low. So pray that I can get that thing under control. Do you have a prayer request this morning? Yes, Sharon. Ella Tiedemann, right? So we need to remember her. They got some treatment they're going to give her, you say? Well, they're testing her lymph nodes. They took the lymph nodes out, and they're testing the lymph nodes. Okay. She had her lymph node removed, and they're testing it. So, okay, let's, let's do remember Ella. John. John. Oh, yeah, John. I went to see John. We did. We went to see John. He's actually doing a lot better than he was a few months ago, believe me. But he's still not well. And he's, his, here's his fear. Here's something he's concerned about. It's not really a fear. He's concerned about it. He's concerned that the cancer meds he's taken aren't working. He's also in pain. Now, one doctor would like to do a little surgery on him, but John told him, says, I don't know that I can make it through this surgery. So he's just going to have to put up with the pain. So let's pray for John that the pain level goes down. And he's going to have a scan in a week or two. Pray that the cancer medicine he is currently taking is working in his body. Pray that, it, that the Lord helps that med work in him. That's John. Does anyone else have a prayer request? Virginia has a daughter and a son-in-law heading back to Arizona. Let's pray that they get there safely. Yes, Cheryl. Um, I've got prayers for my best friend's husband, Brad Peters. We prayed for him before his cancer is back. It doesn't really look good. And the whole family needs prayers, please. Okay, Brad Peters cancer's back and it doesn't look well so let's pray for Brad 
and the whole family. And, you know, not only the family, we know we also need to be praying for people's, you know, co-workers, their community they're in. It, it touches more than families. Let's, let's pray for everybody involved there. Yes. So her name's Kathy, she's in the hospital, she has COVID and she's on a vent. And her husband's also in the hospital, but they're trying to raise a 14-year-old granddaughter. So let's, let's pray for them. Yes, we have another one over here. Yes. So Bonnie and, and her husband had a wreck, mm -hmm. and she hit, she broke her tailbone and some ribs. Seven ribs, oh. right? and then she just had knee surgery three weeks prior. And she just she's still recovering from knee right. surgery. She's in Miller's in rehab right now. Okay, let's pray for them. I can relate to broken tailbone. When I when I was a senior, playing football. We was playing a team, and the littlest guy on the other team blindsided me, knocked me on my tail, <coughs> broke my tailbone, ended my season, a tailbone. I couldn't even sit on my bottom for weeks in school, and all the other classmates just laughed. Wasn't funny at all, was it? Couldn't chase them down. Anyone else have a prayer request this morning? Okay, let's let's remember these this week. And let's and if they come to mind during the week, this is what I do. When that somebody comes to mind, I lift them in prayer right then, because if I don't, I'll forget. So let's lift these up throughout the week as they come to mind, just to shoot a prayer up. But right now, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, and Lord, we have a praise. Lord, I praise you that a son is back from, from, from the Middle East. Lord, I praise you that he's okay. And Lord, they're going to get to talk with him and share. Lord, I thank you that he's home. And Lord, I do want to pray for the farmers in this area. I've prayed for farmers all over the Midwest. Lord, they're putting in long, long hours. And Lord, at this time, they may be a little fatigued. Lord, help them do it safely. No mistakes. Lord, I pray for the farmers in this area. And Lord, there's been a wreck. And Lord, they've been hurt. And Lord, I pray for them. Bonnie, she's had, she has a broken tailbone. It's... it's, it's hard to get around lord she has seven broken ribs and she just had knee surgery lord she's in a fix right now lord i'm praying for her and i'm praying for her husband helping to recover from this wreck and lord i pray for brad brad peters lord we've prayed for him before you know and lord we're praying for him again his cancer is back Lord, I pray that you work something in his body, but Lord, I pray for his family as well. Because we know that when someone suffers, the rest suffer too. Lord, I pray for Brad and his family. Lord, I pray for Kathy. She's in the hospital. She's got COVID. She's on a ventilator. Her husband's also in the hospital. And they're trying to raise a 14-year-old grandkid. Lord, help them recover so they can raise this kid. And Lord, I do pray for John. Lord, John, he's not 
well. But Lord, praise God, he was able to get in a combine this week. Make a few passes. They had to lift his spirits some. But Lord, he's, a, he's got a little bit of doubt about that cancer medicine in his body. And Lord, he's experiencing some pain. Lord, I'm asking you to lower that pain level in his body. And Lord, he's got a scan coming up. Lord, let that scan be an encouragement to him. Let that cancer medicine work inside of his body. Lord, you take over and let that medicine work. And Lord, Lord, we do pray for Ella. Lord, she's had to have a lymph node removed. And Lord, they're going to be testing it. Lord, I pray for that little girl. Lord, help her. Lord, let it come back with good news. Lord, I pray for Ella. And Lord, I do pray for the president and his wife. Lord, I pray for all the senators who are testing for COVID. They're, they're positive. Lord, they're, they're quarantining. They're getting better. But Lord, I pray for all of them. Lord, they're leading our country. And Lord, I'm asking you to guide them and help them to make the decisions that you would have them make. And Lord, I do pray for George, Jan's brother-in-law. Lord, he's got cancer and it doesn't look well for George. So Lord, I'm not only praying for George, I'm praying for his family and his friends, the people around him. But Lord, I pray for George. And Lord, I ask you to help me with my sugar. Lord, help me get it back under control to where it was before. And Lord, I ask you to help me with your word this morning. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now we have a song.
and it is amazing grace. Our scripture this morning is from Proverbs 14:25. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. And John 8, 31 through 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I want to finish up with that story about my tailbone. My, my head... Two of my buddies and I, we were known to be the meanest football players on the team. And they would get around the other teams. They would send people to a ball game to watch you play before they play the following week. That's how we always did it too. And whenever we would go down, our coach would keep it quiet. My tailbone's broke. I couldn't play. And he would take my number and give it to another person for the next game. So they couldn't practice around me, you know what I'm saying? So they would call plays to avoid my buddies and I, and it went to the, our advantage because we didn't have that good of players in our positions. But they'd take our numbers and give it to the other guys to play. <laughs> but I want to talk about truth, searching for truth this morning. And I want to confess that lately I've been trying to limit myself from national news. And in a smaller scale, I've been trying to limit myself from local news. I've even tried to take a day or two off from the computer. Uh, nothing weird, anything like a week or two, but a day or two. You know, after you know, a day or two, you start twitching and going through withdrawals and stuff. But, <laughs> but I have noticed something, that when you limit yourself from these things, I... Maybe it's just me, but I seem to calm down. I hardly go without I hardly go a day without turning the television on or the computer. I mean, I tend to gravitate to the computer. There are some shows I do like on television. I really like Jeopardy. I I will plan my day to try to watch Jeopardy. And then sometimes on Wednesday night it comes on six thirty. Sometimes on Wednesday night I try to bug out here so I can watch the last half of it. But did you know that when you get on a computer, have you ever noticed that the news on the computer is biased? Does this surprise you? <laughs> well, a couple of years ago, my wife, my daughter, and I went on a train trip out west, and it took us all across the northern states, and we ended up in Seattle, Washington, and then from Seattle, we took a train south, went all the way down to San Francisco, then from San Francisco, we, we went through the Rockies back home. Ten days on a train. My advice, don't go ten days on a train. That's way too long on a train. But I'll tell you what, during those ten days, you didn't have television. There was no internet. And I found myself, when we got done with that trip, I found myself really calm. In fact, during the whole trip, you didn't have anything to do but look at scenery and and read. So I would read. I read, I can't remember how many books I did read on that train. I read a bunch of books. I love to read. It gave me an opportunity. Then you come home and you realize you've got over a hundred emails waiting on you and as many social media tags that you want to look at. Most of them are junk, but some of them had to be opened and read. And then I got the, of course, you're on the internet, you're reading your emails and stuff, and you start reading the news. And after a while, I'm agitated again. So it's good to get out of the constant swirl and spin of a 24-hour news cycle. It's good to unplug from the internet. Now, upon reflection, one of the reasons for my agitation, maybe yours too, is I, I no longer trust what I hear anymore. I used to, but anymore it all seems to be agenda. When I was growing up in the 60s, I mean, I can remember, how many of you remember Walter Cronkite? I remember Walter Cronkite. And there's a couple others, Huntley and Brinkley, and, and uh, what was that Canadian's name? 
Peter Jennings, yeah. Now those guys, they just looked you in the eye, told you what was happening in our country, and they trusted us to make judgments based on the information they gave us. They rarely, if ever, gave commentary. And when they did offer commentary, it was presented as an editorial. It was separate from the news section. It was always done at the end of the broadcast, and it was never mixed into the news. My dad was partial to Walter Cronkite. That's why I mentioned him first. <laughs> but there was something authentic about them. They were, they were calming agents. People trusted them. Today, I'm skeptical. I think it's because people who are reporting to us often spin the story to gain an advantage on us. It's like the story, you ever heard the story about the two-man race? There was a two-man race, and in this race there was an American racer, and there was a Russian runner, and they run this race, and the American won the race. So the American reporter came back and said there was a, there was a tremendous race, and the American won. But the reporter from Russia came back and he told their, their country, there was a tremendous race. And the Russian came in second. And the American finished next to last. See the spin? I think sometimes they're spinning us, don't you? So where do we find truth? Where do we search for it? Well, in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, John reminds us of the ultimate source of truth. Jesus said in John 8, verses 31 32, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's how you can know the truth. I once read about a bank teller and all the training that this bank teller was to go through to become a bank teller. And one of the jobs of a bank teller is to be knowing, having the ability to recognize a counterfeit bill somebody's trying to pass off to them. But instead of training the tellers how to recognize a counterfeit bill, they trained the tellers to know what the authentic bill looked like. They trained them on what was on the real thing. And they recognized the fake by knowing the real deal. They became so acquainted with the genuine article that when someone tried to pass off a counterfeit, they immediately recognized it. Believe the truth. Set your hearts and minds on things above, God's truth. Set your heart on the truth, and when people try to pass you off a counterfeit, you'll be so familiar with the general article, you'll know it's counterfeit. My wife and I have done this over the years. We will go hear a minister... And this minister will be preaching away, and most of the people, oh, God, amen, yeah, and they'll jump, run the aisles. You know, we've seen that. But we're sitting back going, something's not right here. Because we've, we've saturated ourselves with the Word of God so much that we recognize they weren't using the Word of God properly. It was counterfeit. Proverbs 14.5 says, A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. And in Psalm 119, verse 11 through 12, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. We need to be like that bank teller. We need to be so familiar with God's word that we are not told a lie we cannot be passed off a counterfeit to us so i encourage you to become so immersed in the god's word then you'll be able to tell the truth from falsehood and when you see it and hear it be aware of it be aware that there's a lot of fakes out there don't fall for them don't work for them john 8 32 says know the truth and the truth shall make you free so we need to free up. We need to know the truth. So right now I'm going to ask you, we're about ready to have the Lord's Supper. We're about ready to have communion. I want us to free up ourselves. Let's prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. I'm going to offer up a prayer of forgiveness. Let's bow our heads and have prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And Lord, we come to you because you are a forgiving God. Lord, we stand before you open.
You know us better than we know ourselves. And Lord, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. And Lord, there are times when we haven't been obedient. We confess we haven't always done your will. And there are times when we get so busy, we don't listen to your Holy Spirit. Father, forgive us. Wash us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, if there's anything that we are doing or not doing that's not pleasing to you, please reveal it to us now. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for forgiveness of sins. And Lord, I thank you for freedom not to sin. Thank you for being with us today. And Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. Now, hear the good news. In John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, and we just did, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves His love for us. God is good. All the time. All the, time. <laughs> the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian church, said these words. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I ask you to bless this bread. Lord, bless us with your presence this morning. Lord, as we take this bread into our bodies, Lord, let us take more of you into our hearts. And Lord, I pray this in your name. Amen. We do always want to remember that the Lord Jesus was whole. We were broken. And yet for our sakes, he was broken that we could be made whole. Those of you who are watching from home, you may partake at this time. And after the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, take, eat, no, the wrong verse. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Remember that Jesus was full, we were empty, and yet for our sakes, he poured himself out so that we could be full. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless this cup. Lord, Help us to remember it's your perfect sacrifice. It's your blood. And Lord, we thank you for it. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Those of you watching from home may partake at this time. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Technical glick. <laughs> we want Mitch to share.
girls can come by us, okay? We offer an open table here at Door Village United Methodist Church. If you would like to join us for communion, the Lord's Supper, if you'll make your way down the center aisle, we will, we will serve the elements to you.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And Lord, I thank you for being with us during this time. Lord, bless this church. Bring us back together again. And I pray this in your name. Amen.